and welcome back to Game Escape here today to give a quick review of DuckTales Remastered for the PlayStation 3. Um, when this game was announced, I was trying to remember if I had actually played it back in the day. It, it didn't seem familiar. I know people were really, really excited about this release. Um, a lot of people believe that this is one of the finest Capcom platformers on the NES, perhaps of all time. So I went back and played the original on emulator, and uh, it, it kind of started to bring back some memories, and I, I, I realized you know, this was a game that I never owned on the NES, but I, I did rent it um, probably a number of times, because the music, as soon as I heard the music um, to the uh, Rainfar, the Amazon stage, uh, the Himalaya stage, it, it really, really came back to me pretty quickly, but I probably did not get very far in the game because it is notoriously, or it was notoriously difficult on the NES, and that's why it was probably a rental here and there. I was a big fan of the show when it was uh, in its heyday there in the late 80s, early 90s, and I probably wanted to, you know experience that in video game form. So that was my perhaps uh, initial encounter with that game, but then I, I, I sort of forgot about it until the pre-release hype here on DuckTales Remastered. And I picked this one up last night. Uh, I did a rant video about how GameStop, despite the fact that I, I got the, the boxed version, which just included a download code and a pin, it was nonetheless um, taken out of the shrink wrap, of course GameStop always does that, so I was a little irritated about that, but I've been playing this game all day, and it is really, really good. So this review is essentially going to be from the perspective of someone with a, a mild nostalgia for the game. I know opinion kind of skews both ways. Some people really like this one, some people are upset that it's somewhat of a departure from the NES original, but since my memories of that original game are, are kind of vague, I'm going to just look at the game from the perspective of someone who obviously has a lot of experience with old-school 8-bit, 16-bit platformers, but who's coming to this game uh, essentially as a... not really a, a, a newbie or anything like that, but as, as someone who doesn't really have a deep, deep love for the original. The first thing that really stands out about this game is just the attention to detail in the visuals and the sound design. This is a gorgeous game, and I think it comes across almost as like a love letter to people who grew up with this television series and enjoy the original NES version. I mean, the remastered soundtracks are absolutely terrific, and you know, the sound effects, it was really, really impactful if you listen to it on, like, a surround sound system. It sounds excellent, better than a lot of the other sort of remakes that at least I've played. Um, just a, a, a gorgeous, clean look to it. it looks very much like the, at least what I remember of the cartoon, uh, but in HD. And, of course, they brought back the voice cast from the show, uh, including the guy that plays Scrooge McDuck, who I, I think is in his 90s now, and it just, it it really is just this burst of nostalgia, and it doesn't really feel like a cash-in. It feels like a very, very unique and, and kind of singular vision of this game. Now, as far as the gameplay goes, um, they do something which I'm, I'm actually in support of. They, they give you an easy mode. And if you play the game on the easy mode, it is much more manageable than the original. Even, I mean, like I said, it was really difficult as a kid. And even going back now, boy, the original NES DuckTales was just very, very tough. So, you know, I'm, I'm in favor of developers kind of giving you the option to move deeper into the game. You know, here on, on the easy mode, you get more health bonuses in the level, and you have basically unlimited continues. And that's not to say that the easy mode is 
a complete walk in the park. There's there's still some challenge, particularly in the boss fights. The the boss fights here are a little bit different than the original game, and they are very very challenging. The the bosses don't have a set pattern. They they kind of change things up if you play them multiple uh, multiple times. And they, they take a lot of hits to kill. This is not like Super Mario Brothers, where three hits kills a boss. So there, there's still some challenge. If you play it on normal or hard, this is I mean, probably one of the most challenging platformers that you can play. And it's it's almost has like that Mega Man vibe for me, not being a very good Mega Man player. Like, it, it takes me some time to, to get through one of these levels. But... On easy mode, you can really enjoy what this game has to offer, and yet not feel like a total uh, sort of hand-holding. It, 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 it does give you enough challenge to give you a, you know, what is a mild sense of accomplishment. The other thing that I, I think with regard to the gameplay, that people, particularly those who love the original, were a little upset by, is the fact that you don't have to hold down to do the the pogo stick attack. On the old NES version, you had a they called down and B to attack the characters with the pogo stick. Here, you just basically hold the um, the square button and you can just do an unlimited pogo attack. But you can actually turn that off if you want the game to feel a little bit more like the original. The other somewhat uh, controversial, if you want to call it that, aspect of this game is, is a lot of reviewers are coming out and saying, boy, there's, it's really chatty, there's a lot of cutscenes. And that's true, and I'm, I'm usually against cutscenes, but here, I was okay with that. Just, just to hear the original cast of this cartoon that I loved growing up, to me that was absolutely fine. Um, if you play it multiple times, I could see... Uh, these I, I can see how these cutscenes might be a little bit irritating, but it's it's not going to detract from your enjoyment of the experience, and you can skip through them, uh, which is nice. But just just to hear that cast, particularly Scrooge McDuck, I think is cool, and you know, to me, I think they gave you just the right amount. Now, as far as replay value goes, uh, I think there's enough of it here. Basically, as you collect diamonds and rubies in the game, uh, they, that gets converted to dollars and you can spend those dollars to unlock concept art and, and music and some scenes from the show. And uh, If you're a fan, as I am, you know that will certainly keep you playing for a little bit. And I, I also think it's just very logical. You know, it brings the aspect of, of greed into the game. I mean, there's certain points, particularly the sort of runaway mine cart uh, stages where you can really risk your life to to get those sort of out of reach or just out of, almost out of reach diamonds and, and rubies. and um, So that's, uh, I think, a bonus. And as silly as it might seem, the ability to swim in Scrooge's money bin is just uh, a cool little nod to the overall feeling of nostalgia that you get from revisiting those shows. Um, this is a good game. This is one of the better remakes that I've played. Like I said, a lot of, I think, love and effort went into recreating what was a classic Capcom game. Um, certainly worth $15. I mean, I, I always thought that games like this, you know, whether it's... Um, Sonic or, or Mega Man, these these sort of um, nostalgic remake game r remake games should be about nine ninety nine. Uh, at fourteen ninety nine, though, this is a pretty good value. The levels are large. There's a lot of backtracking. You you actually feel uh, pretty engaged with each of the five levels in this one. Uh, for twenty dollars for the physical box, it's not a physical copy, but for the PlayStation box, you know, I thought that was cool, and I mean, I'm, I don't really care about the pin, quite honestly, but I think this might be a collectible item, and so I was okay picking it up for 
for twenty dollars, and I feel I feel that I've got my money's worth with this package. So if you like classic platformers, super challenging platformers, um, and maybe you've never played DuckTales on the NES, or like me, you played it and then kind of forgot about it over the years, definitely check this one out. Uh, I can, however, say that if you're a die-hard fan of the original NES game, there's a lot that might put you off here. But I, I, I think, you know, I think I think Capcom should be um, credited for this. This is a really, really good game, and I can only hope. Like, I haven't played the Dungeons and Dragons uh, remake that they're coming out with. Uh, I believe Castle of Illusion is coming out as well. Um, so this is a really positive trend, and. Uh, I, I, I do recommend it for anyone that's ever enjoyed a good platformer. So thank you for watching Game Escape, and I will be back shortly with a new video.